Today, AMD, Intel, and more team up to fight NVIDIA. Super resolution just got way easier. NVIDIA's RTX 5090 and AMD's entire Ryzen 9000 lineup just leaked. We've got it all here. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. This video was sponsored by Micro Center. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, we all know that NVIDIA essentially owns the AI market right now. And a lot of people point to things, as I have in the past, like their software stack, as well as obviously their hardware, which is of course one of the main things they bring to the table. But there's one particular piece of the hardware that's really hard to duplicate, and that is their interconnect in VLink. Well, AMD, Google, Intel, tons of major companies just teamed up to make their own version of it. As you can see right down here, speaking of all of this, it says NVIDIA is at this point so far ahead in the AI hardware game, the competing companies are doing the most unlikely of things. They're working together. A list of all the companies right here, we have Google, Intel, Microsoft, Meta, AMD, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Cisco, and Broadcom have announced the formation of the Ultra Accelerator Link Promoter Group. Okay, super long names aside, as you can see, the goal of it is creating a new interconnect standard for AI accelerator chips. As they state, NVIDIA's proprietary NVLink interconnect tech is used to connect across multiple chips for demanding AI tasks. NVIDIA's Blackwell GPUs support up to 18 NVLink 100 gigabyte per second connections for a total bandwidth of 1.8 terabytes per second. So this obviously allows them to communicate back and forth insanely quickly. This is how you can have these massive arrays of GPUs doing AI work together, all of that. And of course, while AMD has their infinity fabric, it's nothing like this. Well, as you can see, the UA Link Promoter Group's goal is to create a new open standard that allows multiple companies to develop AI hardware using the new connection. Much like Compute Express Link, an open standard high-speed connection developed by Intel for linking CPUs and devices in data centers. Well, get this. Here's one thing that's pretty wild about this. Apparently, the first version of the new standard, the UA Link 1.0, is apparently based on technologies like AMD's Infinity architecture. So, they're infinity fabric they're basically going to be basing it or at least doing something similar to it to try and compete though of course with the fact that you have multiple major tech companies working together on this they will likely be able to make something that can at least somewhat compete with nvidia's nv link time will tell on that one but i'll definitely say that i'm excited to see what kind of products they can release that utilize this and how well it compares to nvidia and if you want to get any of the awesome pc hardware i talk about you've got to visit the one and only micro center the place that was made for enthusiasts like you and me because it's an actual store you can walk into and buy all the parts for an awesome pc build and i say awesome build because they have tons of options for everything hundreds of motherboards to choose from pc cases galore all the latest cpus and gpus they've got anything you could want what's even more shocking is that they have all of this at an amazing price. In fact, they have some of the best prices in the industry. And now they've launched Micro Center News, the ultimate place to get the latest reviews, tutorials, and guides to help you with any of your PC hardware questions. They even have troubleshooting guides for problems you may encounter with your new PC. So check that out, as well as all the great things Micro Center has to offer down in the description below. And next up for today, AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA all have their own versions of Super Resolution. And of course, all Super Resolution is, is basically taking a lower resolution game, rendering in a lower resolution, and then using some type of technique, this obviously depends on the company, to then upscale that to the higher resolution. So the GPU technically only has to render the lower resolution portion, but what you're experiencing is a higher resolution, yet with the performance that you would get if it was lower though obviously if you follow this channel you know that upscaling tech is not perfect to say the least but there's one major issue when it comes to this and that is support some games support intel some games support nvidia some games support amd some support all three some just support a couple it's one wild ride trying to determine what game supports what well 
Microsoft has an answer and they now just released it. As you can see right down here, this is Microsoft's Direct SR. And as they state, it simplifies the integration of various upscaling algorithms by providing a straightforward API, meaning game developers only really have to code for one thing and then Direct Super Resolution takes that code and then makes it work for FSR, XESS, and DLSS, meaning a lot of games, pretty much any game that uses it, should be able to support all three, and it's way simpler because you're basically just coding for one. And hopefully what that will mean is that most games releasing more or less from here on out will have all three. Three. Obviously, there's a lot that goes into that, fingers crossed on that, but this is definitely one exciting day because they have officially announced it. As you can see right here, it says we are excited to announce Direct SR is available now via Agility SDK 1.714.0 Preview. This API was designed in partnership with AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA to enable the seamless integration of super resolution into the next generation of games. Now, Obviously, a ton of people don't really like super resolution anyway. I fully understand that. But for those who do like it, from now on, you should have an easier time with new games as they release, supporting the super resolution that your GPU supports. And next up, not too long ago, I covered a story about the RTX 5090. This story was originally shared by Panzerlead, who has proven himself to be a decent leaker in the past. And according to him at the time, he stated that the GB202 GPU, which is the GPU that makes up the RTX 5090, would come with 16 GDDR7 memory modules. Well, it looks like things somewhat are changing, though not really. Either way, what you'll notice here, someone mentioned that they said, wasn't the 512-bit rumor debunked long ago? To which he replies and says, it is 512-bit, but the 5090 is only 448-bit, which means NVIDIA will be using a cut-down GB202 to make the RTX 5090. And of course, that's not too surprising. We have seen this before from NVIDIA, but that 448 bits means something when it comes to the memory. What it means is that it will only be able to support up to 14 modules of GDDR7 memory for a total of 28. Originally, we had assumed that with that 512-bit interface, to which I will say that's still wild, that was something that leaked a little while back, it's wild that we are actually looking at a 512-bit interface, that is huge, but even with the cut down one, that is still more memory than the current 4090, and that's still a massive bus interface. Basically, NVIDIA's RTX 5090 is still looking like one monster of a GPU, but at least if this is correct, it's not as big of a monster as we originally thought, but once again, still huge. And lastly for today, AMD's desktop Ryzen 9000 looks to have just leaked. As you can see right here, this leak originally comes from Code Commando and is later reported by video cards. And as you can see, it lists basically all of AMD's Ryzen 9000 CPUs. And you might be wondering, well, what happened to that Ryzen AI 300 series? Well, like I said before, that was only for the APUs. As far as we knew, the desktop CPUs look to still be Ryzen 9000, though we obviously weren't sure, but this does seem to ultimately confirm that if this ends up being correct. Regardless, we are looking at four CPUs, the Ryzen 9 9950X, the Ryzen 9 9900X, the Ryzen 7 9700X, and the Ryzen 5 9600X. And as you'll see right off the bat, when it comes to CPU cores, you'll notice that they are all the same as last gen, but obviously that one isn't a surprise. What is a bit of a surprise is the fact that at least for the most part, the max clocks have remained the same. The 9950X and 9900X both have the same clocks as last gen, while the 9700X and 9600X both get a 100 megahertz max boost increase. So yeah, basically AMD's next gen Ryzen 9000 series, it looks like is gonna have to almost entirely depend on IPC increase to get all of its performance. With that said, there are a couple other 
pretty wild changes here. So most of these remain the same, but one thing that has changed pretty drastically is TDP. As you'll notice, while at the same frequency of current gen, the 9900X is now only 120 watts, versus the 7900X being 170. Not only that, but both the 9700X and 9600X both went down from 105 watts all the way to 65 watts. So while clocks haven't really changed much, the actual power draw looks to have plummeted, at least for all other than the 9950X. Take with that what you will, but it is certainly impressive. Don't forget that AMD is potentially set to announce these in just a few days. So we obviously won't have to wait long for that. And if you are interested in that, make sure you're subscribed to GamerMelt. So while that does it for today, are you a little disappointed in Ryzen 9000 or do you think it's going to be this massive IPC jump? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Micro Center down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.